when my friend and I decided to make a spoof video of The Dark Knight Rises, costumes were a priority, and I wanted to start with Batman's mask. I knew that if I could make that from scratch, then I could definitely make the rest of the costumes. The process of making this was fully documented in a separate video, but to recap, the process was sculpting the design out of clay, making a plaster mold of it, emptying it out, and cast liquid latex on the inside. Bane's mask was a little bit different. I had initially planned to use a paintball mask for the base of the mouthpiece, but decided it would be better if I just sculpted it. So I did sculpt it out of clay, molded in plaster, and cast with liquid latex. To make the mask easy to put on and take off, I decided that the mouthpiece would be cut on either side and have velcro tabs that would attach to the cheek pieces. I put a piece of cloth as a template for the general shape of the mask, and the cheek pieces were cut out of fun foam foamy sheets, a material I would end up using many times on making these costumes. I put the mask on my friend's head and adjusted it, resized it until it looked just right. I cut a long piece of foamy sheet for the middle of the mask and then glued on a three quarter inch protective wire wrap for the tubes. The piece in the middle of the mouth with the holes was just a piece of Tupperware that I drilled holes into and glued into place. For the tubes on the mouthpiece, I specifically wanted to pay attention to the specific textures. Some of them were smooth, some were ribbed, and some were a very specific kind of a diamond grip texture that I had seen on metal tools, and I had that texture on a clay sculpting tool that I had. So I dipped that in liquid latex a couple of layers, and then peeled it off, turning it inside out, which gave me a flexible tube with that texture on it. For the ribbed tubes, I used Lego Technique hose pieces, and the smooth tubes were just pens, bodies of pens. To shape the flexible tubes to get them to bend at the right angles, I put wire inside and bent them into shape. And the pieces where the tubes connected to the mouthpiece, I cut up more pieces of pens or other small round plastic tubes, like cheap noisemakers I found at the dollar store. More details were added onto the mask with cut up pieces of foamy sheets on the mouthpiece and on the back and the sides, and also a power cord as a tube running down the underside of the cheek pieces, and also glued on small metal jewelry rings for the grommets of the tabs running along the tubes of the middle of the mask. And then the paint job, just a base of black with color added to match what I had seen in the behind the scenes pictures, which was kind of a olive drab mixed with a little bit of blue. And then black and silver details brushed on here and there. For the vest, I started with a stretchy brown fabric, cut and glued that into the shape of the vest, and then cut up a leather bag I found at the thrift store for the padded armor. Luckily, the leather bag itself had padding on it, and so that helped a lot to make it look like thick padded armor. Glued those on and glued on a bunch of random belts that I also found at the thrift store. Lots and lots of belts. And then added some black paint mixed with water to give the armor a darker finish. The van brace on his arm was also similar, just a leather bag cut up and glued together. Some straps from the leather bag cut off and glued on with a quick coat of brown spray paint. And that was Bane. The bat suit, however, was much more complicated. I started with the boots, with some shoes I found at the thrift store, and cut up the details to match the originals, added foamy sheets and scrap leather pieces for the shin and leg parts of the boots, and a good detail I was able to add to the foamy sheets was a diamond pattern texture that I had noticed on the real boots. I took a metal mesh mail holder and put it in the oven for a couple of minutes to warm it up, and then pressed and the heat transfers the pattern onto the surface of the foamy sheets. And then hot glued all those pieces together with a stretchy black fabric on the back to make it tight, form-fitting, and flexible, and a zipper on the side to make it easy to slip on and take off. The pectoral armor of the Batsuit is a very unique shape. I didn't really make a template for it. I just did it step by step, started by cutting out the bat symbol and then gluing more foamy sheets onto it, cutting the shapes and building it up from there just through trial and error. The lower part of the pectoral pieces have a kind of mesh armor texture 
and I cut up a handbag that I found at the thrift store and glued that on for the texture. And then upon completing the pectoral armor, I saw that it was a bit too small, not really big enough, so I had to completely remake it. But it was much faster the second time, and it looks much better. It was definitely worth taking the time to remake it. The rest of the chest armor was just traced off of an image from the computer onto paper, and cut those out, traced the outlines onto the foamy sheets, and then cut out the pieces. I also added texture onto some of these pieces with the same handbag and added more detail onto some of the pieces with some small foam pieces underneath, which gives the subtle raised contour detail that some of the armor pieces have on the real bat suit. The straps that connect the armor on the backside were just more cut up foamy sheets and I added extra detail onto those by slicing them with an X-Acto knife and also pressing down on them with a wrench which gave a nice indentation along the length of it. The leg armor was pretty much the same process, just tracing outlines onto paper, cutting those out, tracing the outlines, and cutting out the pieces. The neck piece was a similar process, just drawing, tracing, and cutting out the pieces. And then I glued the neck piece together and cut it straight down the middle to split it and then laid it out flat, glued on some black fabric and a mesh material, which I will talk more about later, and then added Velcro pieces on the ends so that I could close it up and seal it back together. The shoulder armor started with a round Tupperware container that I cut up with heavy duty scissors and glued on more foamy sheet details. The bicep pieces underneath were more foamy sheet pieces and more texture from the handbag added on and then straps added on. The straps were also from the handbag and also added Velcro tabs to make them easy to put on and take off. The gauntlets were made of, you guessed it, foamy sheets. I wrapped a sheet around my wrist, cut it into the shape and glued it together. Added extra details, cut out the holes on the sides, for the blades, I was lucky to find some extra thick foamy sheets, the same material of the sheets that I had already been using, but they were thicker, about a quarter of an inch, which was good so I could cut out the shapes of the blades and then use a rotary tool Dremel tool sanding bit to add the bevel onto the blades like they have, and then just glued those on. And they worked really great, they were perfectly safe, and they were pretty durable and looked pretty good. I wanted to make the gloves from scratch, but I figured that they would look better if I found some pre-made ones, and luckily, after hours of searching, I stumbled upon these gloves which look almost exactly like the real ones, except they were missing the knuckle armor pieces, which were easy enough to make. I just cut out pieces of a plastic egg container, and then added some extra foamy sheet details, and then glued those on. I also would have liked to have made the belt from scratch, but I already knew that there was a pretty good looking costume version available for a pretty cheap price, so I just went with that. A coat of gold spray paint helped it to look much more metallic and other details painted on. The bat suit has an Under Armour mesh, a very specific shape and material that I was not able to find in a local store so I had to order it online. And it was a great fabric, but it was just a cut by the yard so I had to cut it into the shapes that I needed for the pants and the torso and the arms. And I had to figure out the best way to bind the seams together to keep them strong and also flexible. And I discovered that liquid latex was a great way to do that. It allowed it to be very stretchy, but also incredibly strong. Turning it inside out makes it look pretty smooth on the outside, all on top of a tight black shirt and pants. And then comes the fun of hot gluing all of the armor onto my body. A little dangerous, but nothing too bad. I had actually made a mannequin that I intended to use for gluing the armor on so that I didn't have to worry about burning myself, but upon seeing the finished product, I decided that it probably would look better if I just glued the armor straight onto myself while wearing it. I glued the shoulder armor onto the neck piece to make that connected, and also glued the elbow pieces of the gauntlets onto the sleeves, which made all of the top half of the costume, except for the gloves and the mask, completely in one piece, easy to slip on and off. Well, not exactly easy to slip on and off. It was a bit of a process, a pretty tight fit, and I did have to wiggle back and forth quite a bit to get in and out of it. 
The cape was just a black bedsheet with Velcro tabs at the top, which attached to other Velcro on the underside of the neck armor. There wasn't much of a paint job required to finish it, just some gray details on some armor pieces, and then a black spray paint to unify the rest of it, and a clear protective coat to finish. And that was it. The costumes worked pretty well. They did take a little bit of wear and tear whenever we filmed action scenes especially, but other than that, we were able to do a pretty good variety of things with these costumes. And they were also fairly cheap to make. It was about $25 for the materials for Bane's costume and about $75 for Batman's. And all of this was made in about two weeks. And we went out and filmed and had fun with them. And hopefully there will be more fun in the future.